I'm a snake. A snake is snake. So welcome back, back to Project Jotemon. So today, I'm going to change out the uh, door seals on the coop here. So, you know, the seals, these ones are 36 years old. These are probably the 80 models, originals. And over time, they just kind of flatten out. They just start to uh, get holes in them, a lot of different things. They'll either leak wind, so it'll cause like a whistle. They'll leak water itself. So they just, over time, need to be replaced. So today, I'm going to replace these. To start the project, really, to get everything off, I need to remove all the trim panels, at least off of the edge of the interior piece. So that's going to be the thick plate, the rear quarter panel, uh, the roof liner here, and then all the way to the A-pillar trim. Everything else can stay. You can uh, take the pieces off now. Since I'm taking the interior out of this anyway, I'm going to go ahead and remove it now, even though I'm not going to put it back at this time, I'll put it back later, but it's going to be the same in reverse of taking it out. So just get yourself a screwdriver, either it's electric or the hand manual, and start taking off this uh, the pillar itself, the kick plate, and etc. Take the trim off, get it out of the way to start putting the uh, new seal in. Okay, so now everything's taken apart. So I took the seat belt off on the B pillar here. There's a screw underneath. Got this kind of the rear quarter at least popped so I can pull it out of the way. Take the top of the dash pad off so the screws along the bottom. Across, there's about five across the top. And then if you look down the defrost grill, there's one on each side of it. So there's about four there. That will come off and then your A pillar can come out. So on the 4i cars with the top pad, which is the 79 to 86 on the Mustangs, Fairmonts may be the same. You're going to have to take the uh, dash pad off. Pretty easy, just take the screws out, it's going to literally just pop up and come off. If you need to replace it, maybe this is a good time to do it anyway, include it in there. Or you can put a cover on it, etc. And then you can take your A-pillar out. So obviously this windshield has been changed once before in 36 years of this car. And the uh, urethane is was stuck on the A-pillar trim finisher. So you pull it out, you got to kind of cut down a little bit, get it out of the way, and then take that out. So on the aero cars, the 87 and 93s, you really just need to take out the uh, speaker grill. There's a screw on the side, take the speaker grill off, and then you should be able to get the A-pillar out relatively easy, and you don't have to take, there's no real uh, dash pad on the top to take apart. So now that you've got this out, it's pretty easy. All you're gonna do is literally just pull off the old one. So if it's like mine, it's gonna be crusty and dirty and that, and now's the time you can uh, start wiping down the flange. This is gonna pull apart. As you can see, it's already been cut there, so this may be a replacement off the market also. And then once it's there, it's off. So now you can get your, your vacuum out, vacuum this off, you can wipe down the metal before you put your new one on. So let me go do that, get my shop back, vacuum it out, throw this old one away in the garbage, and then it's going to be time to get this thing with the new one on it. All right, so let's kind of look at what you're going from. See the profile there? So you're going to. So you can see the bulb on the outside. This one's very round and circular, fresh. 
This one is flat. It's time for a change. Dirty, clean, old, new. No, yeah. All right, so you're gonna put the new one on. You're gonna obviously put the, uh, I don't know, the arrow channel, I guess you'd say, and it's gonna slip right over the metal. So remember while you're cleaning this, if you're not gonna wear gloves, just know you might get some urethane on there and the metal is gonna be sharp. So be careful of that, don't cut your fingers. Wear gloves if you want to. When you're gonna start this, you're gonna, I guess, replace kind of where it was from the factory. So these were both the same. I assume they're gonna be the factory style. You can start them anywhere along the bottom edge. I'm gonna put these back to where the originals were. So if you notice on your kick plate, there's a screw hole at the top. These were about, roughly about two or three inches is where the butt joint is from the halves when they came together. So I'm gonna put it right back in that place. So I'm gonna start with my other end here. And I'm gonna put that back right where it was. So just to start, you're gonna slip it right over the edge. Push down till it seats. And you're just going to work your way down, little by little. I'm going to get out of the way here. One trick you can do is you can just kind of put it up here loosely to kind of hold material up out of the way. So the corners are always going to be difficult, but you want to make sure you seat them very well in the corners, especially this top one. This one is going to be one that will either leak water or wind very easily, so if you don't get it shoved up all the way into the radius of the corner, it's going to be problematic for you. So as you go along, make sure you seat the corners especially well. And then it's going to come back to the middle over here, and then I'll show you how to finish this. Okay, so as you can see, still got a little bit to go, but that's okay. What I want to tell you is kind of a tip and a trick. So what I've got here is this is a uh, this is a five ounce Stanley hammer. So it's plastic coated. It's pretty lightweight in that, but it's non marring, which is what I really like about it. So as you go to put these on, you're going to find that as, as you try to put the the arrow, I guess the slot over the channel, and you try to put it over the metal. You can rock it back and forth and try to get it to sit down low. Sometimes it's not going to go. It's just going to be too stiff, especially up in this corner. This little thing right here is a real booger. What you can do is you can take a hammer like this, and this is what I recommend, but you can use just a basic claw hammer if you want to. You can just tap all the way down it. So what you'll do, you're just going to tap this down, and that's going to help it seat. So this rubber seal itself, inside of the channel, actually it should have a metal reinforcement in it. And that's what you really want. You want to punch this down or tap it down all the way till it sits down on the channel. It'll have a little bit of rubber coating, but you'll notice it's going to be from a light tap to a, you know, kind of like rubber insulated. It'll go to a, a real solid tap. And that's what you want. You want the solid. So also as you go all the way up here, of course this is going to be tight. Hammer is fantastic for that. And go along the way and if you don't uh, you don't think you have it down enough you can always check right around your quarter quarter uh, panel in back here since it's already still in here everything else is gone this is still left you can just take this if it doesn't fit over the uh, sill right here this new rubber you need to check to make sure it sits down it should fit right over top of this fit nice and snug and be beautiful if it's not double check yourself it only takes a minute and try a hammer so you can find these probably at any uh, hardware store maybe, um, home improvement, anything like that. But these things are fabulous for putting this stuff on. And they're pretty cheap too. Okay, so we've gotten down to the end. Everything's run around. And what you'll find is you're going to have some extra length. So when you lay this one down over the top, you'll see that you're going to have, oh, let's say four, four and a half inches in there on this one. That gives you some, some adjustability through the variations of the build of the cars. And you're going to notice even down in this corner, it's going to be very wide. So you might have to take some channel locks or anything like that, or even the hammer, and just kind of try and get that metal as tight as possible. 
so you can get this to fit over it without too much of a bulge right here. So once you have this done, you're going to take some, some straight shears, and these are just basically tin snips. You're going to cut this right at the joint, but I want you to add it in about 3 eighths to a quarter inch. And that's, what that's going to do is give you a little bit of variation. So now at the end, you're going to pull up these two ends, put them together, butt them together, and then you're going to stall them there. That extra length that you have in there of kind of the crush fit, it's going to extend out back into this and back into this. It's going to fit beautifully, and it's going to have some tension on this joint. That way there's not going to be a gap. So once you do that, after cutting, putting it together, double check all the way around is done, and that's it. That's one side. Then all you have to do is go the opposite side, which today is going to be the driver for me, and finish. Okay, here's kind of the finished product. You can see it's got a little bit of overlap, and that's just a little long, and I just pulled both edges up, butt them together, push them back down in that. So you can see the cut here on the, the rubber there. I could have done a little bit better there. I obviously cut it at an angle, cutting this way, so it left a little bit open there, but it'll work. So when you go to shut this, it's going to be beautiful. Okay, so now that you have your piece cut, it's all installed. Everything's in. Time to put the trim back on. For me, since I'm going to eventually take it all back out, I'm not even going to put it back in. The, the fun part about it is you find uh, some auto archaeology. Start looking inside your car, and if this is an older one, start wondering what the heck are people doing in here. So I've got uh, speaker wire. I've got amp power wires that I knew ran to the trunk. The kick plates were broken, so i got to replace those. The dash panels looks like they had maybe... Uh, around six and a half inch somehow stuffed in there that they all cut up so that's got to be replaced the uh, channel across the front dented scratched gonna have to see if i can fix that so it's always fun when you get into these projects but if you have any questions give me a shout you can always follow me on basin motorsports and that's it for today for door seals it's gonna be equal passenger driver it's all the same stuff take it off replace cut butt put it back together so that's it for today. We'll see you next time.